Hello friends, this video on Vector Algebra Part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched Part 1 to Part 16. Taylor or dot product. So if I have two non-zero vectors A and B, the dot product is denoted by A dot B. So we have, this is nothing but actually A dot B is nothing but magnitude of A into magnitude of B into cos theta where theta is angle between A and B. So now you can take this theta also or you can take this theta also. Doesn't matter because this guy will be 180 minus theta and cos of 180 minus theta is cos theta but nearly we will take the smallest angle. Correct. So you have two vectors A and B. You want to find the dot product that will be AB cos theta. Let's derive this. How we got AB cos theta? Uh, let's suppose the same log I have and apply the force on this. We apply the force on this, what we see is that this guy moves, right? And the whole journey I have applied the force. So in this case, if this was the force I have applied and let's assume that my displacement was in this direction, right? DISP. And let's assume theta is the angle between them, correct? So if you observe carefully, my this I can break this force into two parts, right? So this guy will be f cos theta. This direction will have f cos theta component. It will break this guy into this part, f cos theta, and this component will be f sine theta. Correct. So if you see, if you compare the total work, total work is nothing but force into x direction into displacement in x direction plus force in y displacement in y. Correct. Force in x was f cos theta. Displacement in x was the actual displacement. So that is you can see that let's suppose my d vector plus force in y was f sin theta and displacement in y was zero because the object moved from here to here there was no movement of object from here to here this direction right so this is zero so this guy is zero the total work done if you see is nothing but f into d into cos theta correct the total term, term that came out to be was f into d into cos theta and thus the dot product we are told was nothing but a into b into cos theta here force I'm talking about the uh, magnitude of force I'm talking about the magnitude of this displacement so it is f into d into cos theta correct and that was one of the derivation of dot product using the example of physics it's the reverse way of finding the dot product why does f cos theta some people ask me why does f cos theta why does not f a uh, sorry a b cos theta why does not a b tan theta why is not why does not a b cot theta why does always a b cos theta so i generally take the example of the force and the displacement that you get both and we found that the this component actually the the component where we have displacement example in this case a then you just find the component of b in this direction right so this becomes this direction b vector b b cos theta and you multiply this two, you get a b cos theta that is what a dot product all about you you put both the uh, vector in the same direction and then you multiply so you get a and this guy becomes b cos theta you multiply this you get a b cos theta correct if you're taking this as the frame of reference you you find the component of a in this this direction b b direction this becomes a cos theta and this is b the same direction then you just multiply and you get a scalar product that's how it is so let's have some observation 
the observation first observation is the the scalar product is a real number that is it gives a scalar output a dot b if a and b is non zero vector then a dot b is zero if and only if they are perpendicular either perpendicular that's the only case because we are told that neither a is equal to zero nor b is equal to zero a and b has some value example 5 or 6 any number but if a dot b is zero that is possible if and only if a and b are perpendicular because we told that a dot b is nothing but ab cos theta if theta is 90 this becomes zero correct and the whole thing becomes zero because if a and b are non zeros the only possibility where a dot b is zero is a is perpendicular to similarly if theta is zero then a dot b is a dot b itself that means if i have a vector if i have b vector in the same direction a dot b you just multiply these two if i have a vector like this and b vector perpendicular the dot product will be zero because logically for this b vector if you find the cos component here how much impact this b vector is having on this direction this is zero impact this b vector is having on this direction so the product will be zero if you take this case where this is a and this is b the last how much impact this b vector is having on a direction we say full impact because both are in the same direction correct if theta is equal to minus pi a dot b is minus ab Here also, if you see, if I have a here and b here, ulta, it's, it's other way around, right? In this direction, b, then you'll say how much impact b is having on this direction? It's a negative impact and negative full impact actually. That's why a dot b will be minus minus to a into minus to. That's why you can see that when you talk about i dot i or j dot j or k dot k, you get one because i dot i is nothing but they are all in the same direction j dot j is same direction k dot k is same direction but when you say i dot j or j dot k or k dot i you get zero because they are perpendiculars and they all parallel actually so since they are perpendiculars right i dot j is equal to j dot k is equal to k dot i you take you take any you multiply any cross thing i dot j i dot k anything you get zero This is the scalar multiplication. Please note when you say i dot i, you get one. J dot j is also one. K dot k is also one. But when you say i dot j, that becomes zero. Or j dot k also becomes zero. Scalar product is commutative. A dot b is equal to b dot a. Anyway, they are scalar. So you say a dot b or say b dot a, you'll get the same answer. But this will not be true for the next kind of product, vector product. I'll show you that. So now we'll learn how to find the angle between the vector using scalar product. I know that vector a dot vector b is equal to minus of a into minus of b into cos theta. So with this, I can say cos theta is equal to Divide both the side by magnitude of a, magnitude of b, magnitude of a, magnitude of b. This gets cancelled. So you get cos theta is equal to vector a into vector b by magnitude of a into magnitude of b, or theta is equal to cos inverse of this one. Correct. It takes some property of scalar product. It says that if A and B are any two vectors. If you have two vectors A and B, and lambda be any scalar, then if you say lambda into A dot B, or you say lambda into A dot B, or you A lambda B, or you say this way also, this is same actually. So you can ignore this part. So you you multiply the way you want. Doesn't matter. You'll get the same value. So you have this lambda a. You multiply first, and then you see dot product, or you say lambda b 
then you have a dot product or you say lambda into a dot b or you have say lambda into b dot a everything gives the same result this is one of the property of scalar product now let's derive the scalar product let's do the derivation you we say that a dot b is equal to a b cos theta let's see how it is so we know that if this in this case a is a1 i plus a2 j plus a3 k and b is b1 i plus b2 j plus b3 k in this case a dot b vector that is vector a dot vector b is a scalar and that's value is a1 b1 plus a2 b2 plus a3 b3 and this guy is a scalar thing please note there is no i or j it's a scalar thing this is a vector, this guy is a vector, this guy is a vector, and this is a scalar. This is what the formula is. And let's derive this. So to derive this, I'll just multiply a dot b. So that is nothing but a1i plus a2j plus a3k dot b1i plus b2j plus b3k correct let's do a dot product this is nothing but a1 b1 into i dot i that is a1 b1 i into i this is one then you multiply a1 with this b2 this becomes a1 b2 i dot j correct this is a scalar and this is a vector multiplication actually plus a1 multiply with b3k so this becomes a1 b3 i dot k correct plus now i'll take a2 i'll multiply a2 with b1 a2 b1 i into sorry j into i j into i correct plus a2 with b2 a2 b2 j dot j correct plus a2 with b3 a2 b3 j dot k j dot k plus a2 is gone a3 is remaining a3 into b1 a3 b1 k dot i a3 b2 k dot j plus a3 b3 k dot k Here. Now we know that we already know that a light here i into i is equal to 1, j into j, j dot j is 1, k dot k is also 1. But i dot j, i dot k, j dot k, or j dot i, you multiply any of these, this is 0. Correct. So what will happen? I dot I will become 1. So this becomes a1 b1. a1 b1 plus I dot j is 0. This becomes 0. I dot k is 0. This becomes 0. j dot i is 0. This becomes 0. j dot j is 1. So this becomes a2 b2. j dot k is 0. 0. k dot i 0. k dot j 0. k dot k 1. So plus a3 b3. And that is my answer. And this is a scalar number. There is no i or j or k component. This is not a vector. This is a scalar number. So, if I multiply vector a and b such that a is a1 i plus a2 j plus a3 k and b is b1 i plus b2 j plus b3 k, you do a dot product. What you get is a scalar quantity and its value is a1 b1 plus a2 b2 plus a3 b3. And this is just a derivation to prove that. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.